All right, so what's up, everybody? Um, hopefully you guys can see the screen. I don't even know if you can see the dual screen or the split screen or anything else right now, but I'm going to try and share some things. We're on with Art of Adam Port, and I discovered Adam a couple of weeks. Amazingly enough, I'd never found him before now, <laughs> and I feel ridiculous for that. But I discovered him because I really want to share this stuff. So I'm probably going to have to edit this video so I can throw in some pictures and things like that and do a split screen. He did a series called Art of the Soul. And then when I found out how much art was on his page, I was like, oh, my gosh, this dude is dope. So I'm like, OK, I got to reach out and see if I can do an interview with him and I'll do it in a way that gets you guys, because sneaker culture, we don't think that being an artist is a viable living. And yeah, everything you do is hard, but it can be hard in any path. But what I wanted to do is talk with Adam today about his background. And then I'm going to make sure I do a picture in picture and try and share some of these and edit this as best as possible. So the first thing I want to do is allow Adam to introduce himself, tell you his website, his contact information. And we're going to do that again at the end. And then we're going to get into 10 questions with Adam Port, Art of Adam Port. Hey, Adam, thanks for coming on. Hit them. Let the people know who you are. Go. Thanks, Chris. My name is Adam Port. I am a professional artist. have been for about 20 years since I graduated Syracuse University. And uh, my website's adamport.com. You can find me on Instagram, uh, Art of Adam Port. That's pretty good. All right, so obviously that's pretty good. The um, I think it's important for people to recognize a couple of things. So let's jump into these questions because we know YouTube, everybody likes to click and then all of those videos on the side, people get off of things fast. Sure. So we want them to stay with us for a while. I'm going to link right here. Hopefully I'm pointing on the right side. I'm going to link to one of Adam's videos so you guys can look at the art show for Art of the Soul. I'm going to link right here so you'll be able to click here if you're on a phone or a computer. Now, if you're like watching this on your television, you won't see this link that I'm putting right here. All right. Um, with Adam, let's get into these questions. And uh, the, the first thing I want to ask you is um, what you just said you went to the Orangeman, Syracuse. Yeah. Now, what was your major, though? What was your major? So I, I majored in illustration. Illustration. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so at what point did you kind of realize that drawing is what you want? Because, all right, I got to ask you this. Is, is, is this your career or do you have to supplement with other things? Is this what you do full time? Yeah, this is what I do full time. When I first graduated college, I, uh, I coached soccer for a couple of years and then... By the time I, by the time, you know, a couple of years went around, I, I, I was able to do it full time and left that behind and focused solely on art. Wow. Well, I, I think um, it's really important that sneaker culture, sneaker enthusiasts, as well as people who are like executives and things like that in the, in the sneaker world, because I focus so heavily on the sneaker business. Yeah. I think they need to realize that there's opportunity there in art because most of the things that happen in education and curriculums, is focused on the improvement of STEM. Um, art has been cut out of schools. Music yeah. has been cut out of schools. <clears throat> right. And what's happening is those people that they want to be engineers aren't very good engineers because they don't right. have a balance that enables them to think creatively. Yeah, I think it's crucial to, to implement the arts because, like you said, it, it it helps creativity and even problem solving and, and communication. I think are, are you know valuable. Uh, lessons that you can learn through art. So yeah, I mean, they're making a big mistake if they're not incorporating art. Yeah, and see, and I, th I think um, maybe if there was more emphasis placed on art, a lot of the things that happen in like urban areas and, and different parts of cities where the it's not middle or upper class, a yeah. lot of the problems that are there would probably be reduced because the engagement that happens through art, especially with the, you do sports, um, you do sneakers, obviously, since we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah. But your field is called photorealism. Am I yeah. correct? Yes, exactly. What does photorealism entail? Because I think 
when I put the videos up and I put the pictures up and people see them, they're going to think that these are pictures. They're not going to realize that this is hand created. Yeah. yeah. I mean, photorealism is basically, you know, trying to capture an image based off of a photograph. And, uh, you know, it, you're trying to duplicate, replicate the photo, but you're not trying to fool anyone in a sense. But, you know, you staying pretty true to the photograph and trying to represent, you know, the essence of that image. Um, so that's basically, and, and as far as like why I chose for realism, I, it wasn't, it wasn't a conscious thing when I was young and, and, and starting to draw. It's just the way kind of my brain processed images and the way that I interpret them. You know, I was always trying to um, reproduce them as realistic as possible. So that's really how I, just kind of train myself in that yeah. genre of art. But um, again, it wasn't something that was conscience, a uh, conscience that I, I thought about. It just kind of happened naturally. I'm, I'm going to ask you to go way back now because what I like for people to kind of know is what allowed you to get to the point of being able to make a career out of it. So I want to know what was the first work of art you sold that told you, yo, I can actually make a living doing this. Well, you know, it's interesting. It, it, was, it wasn't actually a work of art. I, when I was in college, I had an opportunity to meet with the NBA. Um, and, and it was around the time in college where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to focus on, you know, once I graduated. And I was, I was doing paintings of Michael Jordan. And, and again, it wasn't something I was thinking about. It, just, it was what I loved to do. So that's what I was painting. So when I met with the NBA, you know, we talked about creating the, these, these paintings of some of the NBA stars of that time. And it, by the time I graduated college, I had signed a license agreement with the NBA. So the first thing that I did was I took a few of the paintings that I created at college, Kobe Bryant. Um, I had a painting of Patrick Ewing at the time the trust Freewell was an all-star. So I put those paintings in the NBA store in Manhattan. And that was kind of really like a launching pad. Cause then I started to become known as doing these sports paintings. And uh, that was what really gave me the confidence to move forward and pursue that specifically. That man, <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Obviously I didn't know that. So yeah. that takes me to my next question. You worked with the NBA, and this is, I mean, this is a big deal, man, because sneaker culture, man, we consume. Yeah. We buy all of these pairs of shoes, man, and we are not a part of the culture or the business. Uh, we don't have the jobs in the C-suites. Uh, we may have the jobs at the manager's levels, but we often aren't getting promoted to the RVP spots and all of these different higher up positions in the sneaker industry. Although black and brown kids really are the heart and soul of sneaker culture. Sure. They don't know they can do what you do and they don't know that you can work with these companies. You don't have to shoot the ball. Right. You can actually be someone that works with the company and have a living. So I gotta ask, what um, companies have you worked with outside of the NBA? What other companies have you worked with? So I, well, Staying with like popular culture, I also worked with Elvis Presley Estate. Memphis. Memphis, that's right, man. And um, that was a great, uh, great, did a few projects with them. That was, that was pretty successful. And I also, I worked, I started working with a lot of auction companies because it was a great way for me to market my work, advertise without really spending a lot of uh, advertising dollars. Yeah. And, at, and all the while selling the paintings. So that was really helping me get my work out there. At the same time, I'm selling the paintings. And then the exposure was bringing other collectors who may have missed out on winning that painting to me to create you know, more commissions and more work. So that was a great um, way to get my work out there. Now, my mind works as in, in marketing steps most of the time. Um, you said that and I immediately that triggered an idea in me that you could potentially take your work and work with realty companies. Okay. Right. And sure. um, when they're doing these showings, that artwork can be inside of these million dollar penthouses. Absolutely. Is that something that you do already? Or is that something that 
it's just an idea that came to my head that maybe you should consider? Well, I'm, you know, I'm always looking for ways to get my work out there. Um, uh, you know, I, it, there are people who commission me, uh, you know, to, to create these paintings. And sometimes they're for retail spaces. Sometimes they're for their homes. And it really varies. So um, I don't specifically try to, you know, go that route. But, yeah, yeah it's something that I'm always open to. And, yeah. You know, just, just an idea. Just, an, you know, me thinking kind of. My mind just moves quickly, so I start yeah. thinking like, "Oh, wow! You could actually put those inside of display homes, and yeah. when people go in and they're like, oh, is that a you know?'" And the person can say, "Yeah, well, when you buy the yeah, house, I love it. actually I include love it. that in." Sure, it's just ideas. Um, oh, real quick, because I don't want this to run real long, because you know, people tend to click off of things, and I want them to be engaged. I'm going to go back in and edit it, like I said. Um, when I go to the site and I look at your work. I really like it, and I see like this kind of urban flair to a lot of it. Like you have the breakdance series that you're starting. Uh, obviously, you have sneakers, and then you have sports, which is inevitably kind of like urban and um, hip hop flavored kind of work. Yeah. What the thing that I want to get to is your background. Does that kind of inspire the work that you do? But the bigger question that I have is your artwork is not what anyone would consider um, inexpensive. Okay. Sneaker right. culture inherently consists of a lot of people who are teens into their 20s and 30s, and then there's the older sneakerheads like me or sneaker culture enthusiasts like me who yeah. do have the money to potentially buy certain works of art. Sure. Is there a way that your work can become accessible to younger culture, like the picture of the um, Air Jordan 4. Yeah. Red, right? Yeah. Um, is there a way that younger people can participate in the culture and get something that's maybe like hand embellished by you? Um, yeah. At a, at a more uh, price appropriate level for someone coming out of college, getting ready to get their own new apartment or they want to hang something in their room or something like that. Is there more uh, cost effective, effective things that you're doing on the website too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously the, the originals have one price point, but uh, I'm working on trying to create limited editions that are going to be maybe probably smaller in size. And then obviously the, the price would be reduced significantly. So I think that would be more affordable for the average person. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that, that should be up on the website in, in the near future. All right. That, that's really, that's a pretty important kind of thing for there's a lot of people that are like selling sneaker art. Yeah. And it's not very good. <laughs> it's getting more popular. But because it's so popular, people are creating these like pop-up websites. I mean, even my daughter sat down and did a photo series, but I only made those photos for my office. So sure. when, you know, when you walk through the office, there are these photos that she took and uh, we don't sell them, you know, and I know that there could be potentially issues with selling products of licensed items. Yeah. So you have to approach it in a really different way. But I think sure. if when people see these pictures, they're going to be like, oh man, I love to have that on my wall. Yeah. Well the originally my intention was just to do originals. Yeah. Um, that's why, you know, I created the show with the gallery, but I'm getting a lot of requests for for reproductions. So that's kind of what got me to start thinking about you know, doing a limited edition series, but I also want to be sensitive to, you know, the logos and trademarks that are in these uh, works of art. So, you know, obviously I want to go the right way about it. Yeah, I, I don't, I think you have to be careful, but the work is so beautiful, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just awesome. Um, we're going to wrap it up because we're at almost 15 minutes. So I'm going to leave. Wow. I want to get you with two or one last question and then ask you to sign off and let everybody know what's up. And then I'm going to edit this and get it up ASAP. I'm going to try and get it up in the next few hours. Um, if you're talking to a kid, right, and we're in this post, hopefully we're getting to a post-COVID-19 quarantine. So. Uh, you know, this new normal and it's draining, man. Um, what do you tell a kid who's being, who's getting a lot of pushback and they want to be in, an artist? But they're getting a lot of pushback. 
And once again, I want you once you answer that to tell us where we can find you and then we're going to wrap this up. So what would you tell a kid in this world? How or what they should do if they're getting a lot of pushback on being an artist? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think that if someone is really passionate about something, whether it's art or something else, I think they should really focus on learning as much as they can and practicing because the better you get, the less pushback I feel like you're going to get from people because they're really going to start to see um, the potential. And the, you know, the, the more you work at it, obviously, the better you're going to get. So I think if people see the growth, especially, you know, if you work as a young kid, you know, anybody starting out, you know, they're not going to be able to compete with people who have uh, been practicing for 20 years, whether it's on a basketball court or, you know, in an art studio. So yeah. I think that, you know, if you're passionate about it, try to consume as much information as you can and work as long as you can. And the, the better you get, the less resistance you're going to get. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Perfect answer. Uh, we'll stop right there. And uh, once again, let everybody know where they can find you online, social media, website, all of that stuff. Go. Yeah, they can definitely check out my website, adamport.com. And I'm constantly posting on social media so they can go to Art of Adamport on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, that's really the best places to uh, check out what I'm working on now. Man, I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate you, Chris. Like I said, I'm getting to work on this immediately, and I'm going to keep hitting my hand because I'm stressing how much I appreciate you giving me your time. Um, maybe we can work on something in the future, like a giveaway of a limited print or something. Let's I'll do figure it. it out later. Let's but do it. I'm definitely going to be checking for everything you do. I appreciate you for stopping through and answering a few questions. I think that was 10. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up, and I will talk to you later, brother. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. All right.